Teachers, teachers, watch this. Hello, yes, I would like a number one game with extra fries, extra large, and I need some mayo on my sandwich. Okay. Extra mayo on my sandwich. Okay. There's mayo on my sandwich. Oh, I say mayo on my sandwich. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. There's mayo on my sandwich. Oh. There's mayo on my sandwich. Okay. There's. Yeah. yeah. There are mayo on my sandwich. There's mayo on my. Okay. Wait. Hold up. Did he just fuck on my sandwich? There is mayo on my sandwich. I don't know if there's mayo on my sandwich. Did he just fuck on my sandwich? Hold up. Did he just fuck on my sandwich? There is mayo on my sandwich. Man, I don't know if there's mayo on my sandwich. Did he just fuck on my? Hold up. Did he just fuck on my sandwich? If he did, then I won't have it. I'm gonna pull a katana now. It is time for subtraction. There is no time for relaxing. Cause this man fucked on my sandwich. Fucked on my what? Fucked on my sandwich. Damn, he just fucked on my. Hold up. Did you wanna fuck on my sandwich? There is no way you be the last man standing. I'ma give you the no cut it. I'ma give you the big bull like Gannon. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'ma send you to another planet. I do not need no magic like a bandit. I'ma go in no brand no planet. Hold up. Fuck up my sandwich. This man just fucked up my sandwich. There ain't mayo on my Yeah, there ain't mayo on my sandwich. There ain't mayo on my sandwich. I don't know where there's mayo on my sandwich. Oh, did he just fuck up my sandwich? Oh, My booty voluptuous. My booty voluptuous. Yeah. It's hey. hard. It's hard to jump with it. You cannot fuck with it. Yeah. Hey. Hey. It's hard to jump with it. Hey. 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 I see your bitch, see the bounce. She need to get hey, to the pound. I see your bitch, you are a clown. Hey, 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 hey. 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 Yeah, yeah, hey. The 808's breaking the ground. The 808's breaking the ground. Hey, I think they need a new sound. Hey, my booty is bigger than this round. It needs a Twitter account. Tweet it whenever it's out. Hey, tweet it if you need some clout. Hey, my booty is bigger than this round. Hey, my booty is my booty, my booty, my booty. My booty, my booty. My booty is larger than lunch. It's scrumped in the yumptu. It's just be gushing with sauce when you brush with it. Up in the club, they be loving it, rubbing it when I be busting it down. Be honest, you are in love with it before the bump and then head your life crumbling. Then thoughts that are troubling, rubbing it, you just be fun. Then whenever I start to bring it around, my booty is larger than lunch. It was scrumped in the yum. It was just be gushing with sauce when you brush with it. Up in the club, they be loving it, rubbing it when I be busting it down. Be honest, you were in love with it before the bump, and then had your life crumbling, thoughts that are troubling, rubbing it. You just be fumbling whenever I start to bring it around. I thought it was weird. Dito and Speedos. Dito was eating Doritos. Cool Ranch. Dito Doritos. Dito also eating Fritos. Also good. Dito Fritos. Dito was vibing in Kokomo. Key Largo. Dito Montego. Dito was shooting some free throws at the YMCA. Dito did free throws. Dito was trying to drop some pounds. <laughs> Dito on keto. Dito was way too damn cute. I might eat him up. Dito burrito. It's always sunny when Dito is free though. That's why I call him Dito DeVito. Dito on Dito. Dito, 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 Dito,
Dito on Dito. Dito on Dito. On Dito on Dito on Dito. On Dito on Dito on Dito on Dito on Dito on Dito on Dito. I put Dito on top of a Dito. Then I put Dito on Dito on Dito. On Dito on Dito on Dito. Dito on Dito. What the fuck's the father board? What the fuck's the motherboard? Everyone says download RAM. I don't know, like, you have a motherboard. What is thermal glue? Is thermal glue glue that's hot? Is it glue that fucking thermals? What I thought was a beat pussy or a camel toe that I was fingering, it was a ball sack. I wanted to experience what it's like to, to, to hold, like, a 10-inch dick in my hand. Can I get more hair? Jesus fucking Christ! That's a dude, and that is the hottest girl to meet. I do coke. Hello? Hello? We haven't started yet. We're about to start. Yeah, we're. I'm about to put it on. Uh, uh, give me a second. <laughs> saying baby you see that that is shameless you are a fucking liar for attention what the fuck is this dude someone give me some dumb coke dude i had a dream of being pounded in the ass and i was aroused when i woke up doesn't make me gay it was fucking hot okay a big ass six foot five werewolf looking guy with huge muscles bear hugged me <laughs> why when a woman gets a vibrator it's seen it's seen as a bit naughty fun but when a guy wears a 240 volt fuck master pro 5000 blow up latex bowl six feet pulsating vagina elastic Anus with non-drip semen collection tray together with op system. He's called a pervert. <laughs> Cozy stream. People talk. Wow. Hello, Andrew. Yo, thank you. Art stream. I miss these. Yeah. So I need to. Uh, yeah, I'm a simp for Maya. What can I say? Grift. What's up? Thank you so much. Um. I need to finish Matt's People birthday talk. present wow. for tomorrow. Take the hood off. It's 50 degrees in here. Fuck you. We have no People heat. Wow. Cam, thank you for the 22. Holy shit. 
Appreciate that. Um, Dobby. Yo. People talk. Wow. Bald Heagle. Thank you. Very nice. Um, heat is overrated. Talk, wow. Uh, Noah. The two months. Kareem, Bray, Mug. Thank People you. Talk, wow. Kareem was 16 months. Mug with 22. Wow. Morkert People with talk, wow. five. Mac with People two. Talk, wow. Voyage People Sims talk, with the wow. tier one. Thank you. All right. Um, talk, wow. Get in the corner. It's 90. <laughs> um, <laughs> so People stupid. Talk, wow. so, I was like, a, but I actually read it. I was like, what is he talking about? Um, holy 4,000 subs. What the fuck? Since when? People talk, wow. Dong Lord Poach Puppy? Holy shit, what? We're like a 2,000 sub stream, what the fuck? Thank you. Because the charity stream? That's nuts. People talk, wow. I can't believe I haven't been Yo. live since the charity stream. Yo, Wilshire. Fernie with the five, thank you. Lou, bro, thank you for the People six. Talk, um, wow. I feel like I haven't been live in forever. That, that charity stream feels like it was like weeks ago. Be love donut walled. What do you mean? I didn't. I didn't miss a sub. Sproxy Gimli. Um, the break Six was well deserved. Ago. Ah, it, it was. It was good. I mean, yesterday, you got thirty thousand new fun away. Wow. I actually didn't even check that. I have. I don't know what I started with. Wow. Yes. Peepo pock. I started with. How do you see how many followers you have? Three. Mario, what the fuck? What are you Red doing? mask, thank you for the th tier three. Holy shit. Mario, oh. Yay. And Papa Cali with tier People one and Hod with 19 months. Yeah, I'm at 392,000 followers, but I have no idea what I was at before, but I believe you People guys. Talk, wow. That's a lot. That's Smile. a fuck ton of followers. That's crazy. Hod, thank you for the 19 months. Um, wait a second. This is the kid that. Isn't this the kid that bit on Shroud? Wow. Nice, dude. Last oh my god, what the fuck? Yeah, I'm gonna link him. You know Shroud, uh... I'll find the... And you got the host from Shroud. One enemy remaining. Wait. He okay, knows what he's doing. Space, can you send me the clip? That sounds so dope. Shroud hosted him and then Yo. said that he would play with him anyway. Oh. Wait, what the hell's going on? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. They're not whoa. bots. Shot, stop What's looking happening? like What's bots. Happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Who hurts you? Yo, 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 yo. Yo, Maya. What the hell? What's up? Oh. Oh no. Oh no, chat. Oh no, chat. Wow. Good evening, oh. all. Right. Don't say that. So, so, so close left. So, so close left. Last player standing. Oh my god. No! <laughs> no. Alright, 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 alright. Alright, guys, guys, I'm even kidding. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Let's go, chat! Oh my god, they're gonna Turn me up, baby! Come on! Turn me up, let's go! You two famous for Let's go, chat! Come on! That's so cute. Alright, come on, W I'm boys. $50,000 for an hour of my time. And I plan to play him with him in the future Aww. because that's some fucking that's some daddy shit right there. Fifty grand to pay to to play with me. I mean, it was for charity, right? He was he was gonna he was gonna he was helping he was gonna help Maya out with uh, you know charity sanctuary um, that she was building, and he was willing to pay fifty thousand dollars for an hour of my time. So I'm gonna host him, and I will play with him in the future Aww. because that's fucking incredible. I don't know anything about him though, so. You guys, you guys give him a little vibe check for me, okay? Let's get a vibe check. Uh, report back tomorrow, uh, 6 o'clock, <laughs> PST. Thank you. Yay, Shroud. So nice. 
Okay, wait, I need to change something in my panels. Do, 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 do. Guys, I have a lot of updates for you, by the way. Um, lots of stuff about that fundraising People stream. Um, edit panels. Cool. All right, we're good. Um, the donate link, link is back on mine, just so you know. Um, Wasted, thank you for the tier one, the 12 months brick. Nick. <laughs> Shitto. Thank you. People pop, wow. All right. Schlatt. People pop, wow. Yo, Leaf Gang. E2 on Leafs. Schlatt's texting me about the router. This is not my, uh. This is out of my control. I don't know. Uh, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, Schlatt just moved in to the old house and the people that came out to, to that came to clean out the old house were like, yep, just get everything out of there. And they took everything, including the router. <laughs> so he's got no internet. Earlier he had no power. He has nobody there. He can't leave. He can't order food. There's no food there. We told him he could come here, but he can't get here. So, Shroud is actually stranded. <laughs> or not Shroud, Schlatt is, is stranded in this house. Honestly, is it possible? Because I was watching Miz's stream. Is it possible for Big Dog to bring yeah. a router over there? And for it to function? I don't know how routers work. I always just have someone set it up. Yes. But it's probably a modem. Isn't that all that it needs? They took the modem. What is the difference? There's two? And he needs- Shroud needs a router and a modem. So when I had- to, when I got DDoSed, I went and got a new modem. But I still had the same router. Okay. Pog, wow. <laughs> I could just get Shaylat and bring him to y'all's place. Dude, you can't. That's a. You can't get here. But thank you for the eight months. <laughs> he can. He's big dog, dude. Pog, wow. The roads are. I should have taken a picture of my footprint because I went out there just now to get stuff from my car and I was at, in my ankles trying to open my car door in snow. And like, I don't have snow chains. There's nobody that's gonna get the snow off the road. Like, it's dangerous. I got a guy that can get us there. Bro, does he have a plane? Yo. Thank you so much. Hello there. Congrats on the charity stream. What does it even Albius. mean? I hope this will Snow help chains? you even more. Have a fun stream. It's just a normal life. You guys also have to understand we live on like steep. We live on a steep hill. So last time I tried to drive in the snow, it was fucking terrifying. I was braking going down the hill and it was my car wasn't stopping and I was like I'm never doing this again. Like, I had my foot all the way on the brake, and my car was still moving, and then it went like that a little bit, and I was like, nope! <laughs> and I left my car at the bottom of the hill, and I walked back Schlatt up. Schlatt is from New York. I'm sure he can handle a few cold weather issues. But yes, the roads truly suck, I am. People talk, wow. I am so sick. I am so sick of people being like, oh, you're just from California, you're just from Texas. And not understanding that it's about the infrastructure. You know how long we didn't have power? Not just me, but other people. Like, Texas doesn't know what to do. Okay? It's not just because there's not that much snow. It's, like, nobody knows what to do. <laughs> it's just not safe. Nobody salts the roads out here. Nobody clears hey, the roads out here. Hey, do you know when the recent podcast episodes will be on Spotify? Smile. I lose power every week. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. 
I'm sorry that your life sucks so much, man. It doesn't change the fact that I can't drive right now. And it's cold as fuck outside. It's so cold, all right? Can everybody just fucking relax and be like, damn, it's snowing in Texas. That's crazy. Instead of being like, you fucking pussy loser. You think that's snow? That's not even snow. I live in the fucking ant. Like, what? Like, shut up. So annoying. Oh, my God. It is actually, like, my biggest pet peeve right now. So fucking annoying. I would show you my... Instagram story, but I don't think I can get to my archive on desktop. I'll show you a picture. I took a picture this morning. Dun -da -da, look it. Everything's all snowy. People talk. Wow. You think that's no my and my wow. roommate's an emperor penguin. Yo, legit, thank you. Jumpman, thank you for the three dollars. Okay, Hassan. Yeah, that's why I retweeted what Hassan said. I literally retweeted it, look. Cause I was reading everything this morning, and I was like, God, everyone's so fucking annoying, Hassan tweeted this, and I was like, true. Another snowman stream when? I don't want to go outside. Do, 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 do. I was really sad when I found out you keep a, a Sarah out in the freezing cold where his tail got frozen. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. I should have brought him into my room last night. Ugh. I'm a terrible owner. He is he is so cold and unhappy. Shut up! Okay. Sorry. Anyway, um, Alveus. <laughs> so, you okay? No. God, don't fucking yell. <laughs> this is a pussy. Someone's cranky. Clark, you are so annoying. Has anyone ever told you that? Holy shit. Okay. Um, welcome back to the stream. So, today I am. No, you're the first. Now you're not making sense, dude. I don't know what you're talking about. Good vibes all around. Let's go. <laughs> Anybody want to do a reset? Does this kid stop bitching, Fat King? I want to know what you look like. I bet you look like a fucking... Hey, welcome back to the stream. Big Bash, thank you for the 19 months. Okay, so we have to finish Matt's, or I have to finish Matt's present today from the Aquatic Ambiance thing. And then, um, uh, yeah, this is true. This is actually really sad. Bunch of people died on I-35 in Fort Worth, Texas a few days back. That ice on the roads is serious business. Yeah, it's like really icy. I've seen, have you guys seen the videos of people ice skating yeah. on the roads? It's really bad. It's really bad. Very slippery. Yo. Yo. Maya Higa. Listen to me. I just want to say that that stream was unbelievable seriously and congrats on the subs by the way 4k is huge. The stream was legendary. Also shout out to your offline chat seriously they may not think that our stupid convos mean anything but I like them. Thank you for the five. Um, so you're gonna wrap a present today? No, I'm gonna finish making it. I have to paint it. I did sculpt Donkey Kong. It's not very good, but um, I think once it's painted, it'll be fine. Look, this is him on the little um, fish. Right? So I just have to paint it and then glue it. And then I have the lights and then I have um, 
Oh, I have this thing. I'm glad I'm doing this on stream because I'm not going to understand it. It's it's a little thing that you can use to record music or something. And then there's just a button and you can play. It's like if you wanted to make a picture frame with a little message that you could press the button and it would give you a message. It's like that. But I'm going to try to record the song on it. Yeah. And then whatever. But I don't know how it works. Ooh, mogul moves. Cutie sent me these, but they got here like three days too late. And so she's shipping out signed ones for the auction. She told us to just keep these. So that's why I have this hoodie now. Um, you know what's funny is I gave, thank you for the five. Shido, I gave this, I gave this to Matt yesterday and I'm, I've been wearing it all day today. That's like a new record. Um, okay, so let's talk about Elvis. Um, it has been a trip getting everybody's addresses and getting everybody sorted there's one person who has bailed on two big ticket auction items which sucks really bad and so we've been dealing with that um and we've only had one chargeback actually or that i've seen there was one chargeback it was for a hundred dollars and they canceled it um and i think it's because they thought that they got charged twice or something and they realized that they didn't um so yeah so that's really impressive that's really good considering how many donos there were i'm i'm pretty certain there's only one chargeback also in my alveus email i've gotten lots of emails of people wanting to help just so you know if you're watching this right now i will let you know when i'm hiring i, I had a lot of people email me saying that they wanted to hi be hired for animal care uh, which i totally understand because that's everybody's dream job right like they're like hey do you need help i'll come uh, like a uh, you know whatever um, and got a bunch of resumes and stuff like that. Red Surf, thank you for the 14 Yo, months. A lot of them were kids, uh, which I, I emailed all of them back <laughs> because I was like, I'm not gonna crush their dreams and exotics right now. But um, I got a lot of emails from like 16 year olds that were like, I just love animals. They sent me a resume, like a, a resume really um, with like their experience and why they wanted to help and whatever. And I was like, not right now, but look out for it in the future type thing. I'm not looking for animal care help right now. But I also got a lot of people that emailed and they were like, hey, I'm a lawyer. Hey, I'm, um, a web developer. Hey, I'm a vet. I had a vet offer to move out here to be an on-site veterinarian. And I was like, that's incredible. I just don't have the means to pay salary to a vet. And I don't have enough animals to, to have that on site right now. But I'll let you know in the future because she's like down. She's like, I'll move. <laughs> like, I want to do conservation and I'm already a vet and I haven't figured out how to put them together. But like, I want to put them together. So that's really cool. Lots of people that have been willing to help. I've had a couple artists too. Like someone is sending me really nice photography prints to put up. Like he does wildlife photography. So he's sending me prints to put put in the, uh, like in the facility. Uh, this, this girl's doing a, a painting because she does pet commissions. And so she might do one of of being for, for the facility. Um, and then I've had a couple smaller streamers reach out wanting to sponsor things with budgets of like three to 5K. Um, and so I'm talking to them on Discord right now because they may end up sponsoring like some terrariums and stuff for the reptile room. But speaking of the animals at the, at Alveus, Blizz, thank you for the five. I'm from South Louisiana. Doesn't down in Louisiana, the snow isn't uh, that just bad. People in both Texas, Texas and Louisiana don't drive the best and cause accidents. Just ignore everyone. Yo, thank you. Wow. Night. Yo, congrats, Maya. The best luck to the future of Alvius. Thank you. Um, it's not about driving well. I don't know. I just think it's so annoying that people can't just be like, damn, that sucks. They have to be like, okay, but look at me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I... I'm trying to think of like, like in college or something, when you talk about how much schoolwork you have or something, you're like, damn, like I have three projects to do by tomorrow. And then your friend is like, I have a final tomorrow and I have to turn in four papers. Like that's nothing. It's just like, shut up. <laughs> it's just so annoying. Um, yeah, anyway. Uh, so animals for Alveus, I have a lot of updates. And by a lot of updates, I mean like a lot of updates. Okay. Pog, wow. Mystic, thank you for That's the two a months. That's huge character defect in so many people. Couldn't agree more. I've discovered lots of character defects recently, but we're not going to talk about them. Um, I got a, I got a no for Sydney. 
Okay, which is something that I, I already kind of made public, but I don't think I've talked about it on stream before. So Sydney, the, the umbrella cockatoo that I was trying to make a donation for, um, I would have absolutely loved to have her as an ambassador, but her and her partner, Peaches, are just way too valuable. Oh, wow. Tipsy Nomad with the four months. Hearts in chat for Tipsy Nomad. He contributed so much People on that stream. Wow. Thank you. Yo. Um... Hello, dear Miss Maya, sir. Hey, if I stream wow. me animating a clip In of Jay Schlatt, WTF. yo, would he notice my stream and say hello to me? Is that something I should do? Uh, no. Well, I mean, you're welcome to animate something for him, but he's not. He's probably not gonna see it. I don't know. I'm sorry. Does that mean? I don't know how to answer that. I love your streams, I made a limerick for you, hope you and chat have a laugh, chat I know I have no hair, I also do not really care, I made 500k, it really made my day, from now on a hoodie is what I will wear. That's very nice, thank you, for the five. Thank you, Lane. Okay, so, bald, oh yeah, I'm bald. I actually think that it's grown a little bit though. Like. It feels a little bit longer. I don't know if that's a thing, but it feels longer and a little less pokey now. Um, is it cold? Yeah, it is cold. I did go to work and nobody knew that I was bald, which was nice because I had my hoodie on um, and a hat. I had a beanie and my hoodie on, so so nobody knew, and that was pretty, pretty nice. Um, but yeah, it's really not that bad. I just started like i i've gone through one drive through without a hat on and then i talked to one police that sounds bad it I, nothing happened i talked to one police People officer when i was bald but those are the only like public those are the only people like outside of the house that have seen me bald and i didn't feel weird about it at all the other reason i talked to a police officer is because he was parked at the ranch where acero is and so i pulled up and i was like yo can i help you like are you trying to find the owner or whatever that, that was it it's not like i got pulled over or anything um breaks thank you for the thank you for the time so back to focusing i got a no for sydney um which is very sad but she and peaches have a very good home at the zoo and they just use them way too often and so they're like they're just not uh, it's just not something that can happen. So, I looked into other parrots. Do you guys, this is like a long time ago. Um, headphones not straight? Really? Um, do you guys remember Pandemonium Aviaries? People pop, wow. It was a long time ago. No, lots of no's. Uh, a couple of yeses, wow. okay. Legendary, thank chat. you for the three months. Gosh, it must have been like my third podcast guest. Um, they breed Victoria Victoria crown pigeons, um, but she has lots and lots of birds. This is Michelle Raffin. Um, so yeah, she she was a podcast guest. This is pandemonium pandemonium wow. pandemonium aviaries. So they bleed where crown pigeons. Um, she does really, really important work for, for these birds. Talk, wow. um, but anyway, so she, she's a bird lady, right? So she doesn't, whoop, so she doesn't just have eight, 80s skink, legendary, thank you. She doesn't just have those pigeons. She has lots and lots of birds. So I reached out to her and I was like, hey, um, I sent her the launch People video. Talk, wow. I was like, I just got a no on this cockatoo and I'm looking for a parrot or two for my program. Do you have anything or People do you know talk, of wow. anyone that would have something? And she, she offered, she gave me six options six options okay and i'm gonna walk you through all of them just because it's fun the first two options she gave me were uh taracos a lady ross taraco which is this and then a who is very friendly so like this this kind of bird um and then a whoops and then a violet taraco which looks like this also beautiful Hard stuck, thank you for the five gifted subs. Um, Icy King, thank you for the three months. Serenera, Serenera sauce. Seren Serenera moss. Oh, creative. 
Thank you for the tier one warm love letter. Thank you for the Twitch Prime. Okay, so these birds are <laughs> are beautiful. I already turned this pair down though. And the reason that I did that um, is there are a couple reasons. One, um, uh, yeah, I'll just, spoilers, but I picked two out of the six, okay? So these ones I turned down. The Violet Ross Taraka, which is the female, is uh, not into people at all. The male is very friendly. But I turned them down for two reasons. One, um, because they eat a very specific fruit diet, which gets very, very expensive. And I'm just trying to think long term here and caring for them because you have to buy this like exotic fruit base that's like papaya and mango and like a really fancy fruit base. And then you like, add produce on top. Um, so they're really expensive to care for. Um, I'm not, I know that this wouldn't be a usable ambassador because she doesn't like people and the male is friendly. Um, but, you know, I, I would only get one usable workable ambassador out of it. And then the second reason is they're doing really well in the wild. Um, they are, they live really high in the treetops. So they, they're, I think they're both least concerned. Um, so that's the main reason why I said no to them. I'll just go through the six birds so we don't lose track here. Um, the second pair she offered me are macaws, a macaw pair, a male and a female. The first one is a blue and gold macaw, very common. Everybody has seen a blue and gold macaw. Um, and then the other one is one of my favorite parrots of all time, just because they're just so strikingly beautiful, is this Catalina macaw. Um, and the Catalina macaw is very nice. Uh, likes people a lot. The blue and gold macaw is extremely aggressive um, and, and bites a lot. And so I was trying to think like, macaws are great ambassadors because they're so heavily exploited by the pet trade. And it's the same kind of story with they're taken out of the wild before they can reproduce, right? So they're more in captivity than there are in the people, wild. Wow. Um, actually, people I shouldn't say that because I don't actually know those numbers. Dempog. Danny, thank you. Um, So, macaws are a great ambassador for that reason. Danny, thank you for the three months. Um, but the reason that I said no to this pair is because I, I'm really comfortable with parrots, right? I've done my internship at a parrot sanctuary. I've been around parrots quite a bit. Um, and so I feel confident that I could get this blue and gold to, to be okay with me and I could, I could develop a pretty good relationship with that bird. Um, but macaws are very particular and even if I got to that point with that bird, I would probably be the only person that could handle it. Maybe Ella could also handle it if she put in the work as well. But she, the impression that I got is that it's never gonna be a bird that you can just pass to people. You know, like the way that you can just hand Sydney to somebody and they can hold them. It's never gonna be that way with this blue and gold macaw. So probably another not workable ambassador. And I'm worried that it's not worth the risk of a macaw biting in a program, blue and gold or Catalina. Uh, because macaws will break fingers. I mean, they break skin. Macaw bites are nasty. Their their beaks are made uh, to crack nuts that we need to use a nutcracker for. You know, like they are no joke. People don't understand how much these bites hurt. I mean, it's it's absurd. I, I getting bit by a macaw is worse than getting bit by a baby beaver to me. And getting bit by a baby beaver sucks. I know that's like not very relatable. I don't know why I use that example, but <laughs> like it's really bad. So that's why I said no to that pair. But, um, not a great reference point. I'm trying, like, I don't really have a comparison besides, oh, getting your finger stuck in a car door. Has that ever happened? Because I, that's, I've done that one time and that's what it feels like if a macaw bites you and doesn't let go. Except you have a living thing, so it's like moving, you know? So it's, it's almost worse. And it'll break skin and it can break fingers the same way. Um, so I cannot, I, I don't want to have that liability at my facility especially if I'm doing an education program and they bite a streamer or they bite even me or Ella or something and there's blood on stream, can't risk it, right? And it makes the species look not that great if somebody gets bit on stream. So that's why I turned down that pair. The pair that I said yes to um, is one, one is a blue fronted Amazon, which looks like this. Actually, let me just send you the, the pictures that she sent me. If I, if I can do that, hold on. Blue fronted Amazons are very cool. Um, great talkers, not a singer, but great talker. 
I don't know if I, maybe let's check if I sent them in my team's chat. Has image. Oh my God, so many images, holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> Max. Here we go. Okay, this is the blue fronted Amazon. Her name is Siren. Ta-da! She sings you happy birthday when you feed her. Um, she's not much of a biter. Uh, Michelle said that she pretty much step, steps up onto anybody. Um, I'm not sure how old she is, but she was abandoned by a pet owner a while ago, so she's had her for quite some time. And then the second bird that we're getting, you'll see the uh, the macaws in this video, but Mia is the one that we're getting. She's an African gray. She's in the back um, of this video. So this is the macaw pair that I said no to, and this is Mia. <laughs> I didn't get any pictures of her, but I got this video. Um, nice. So... Mia and the blue fronted Amazon Siren are a pair, and I'm gonna get the two of them. So they'll be our parrot ambassadors for the pet trade. Mia isn't especially good ambassador because Michelle believes that she was taken out of the wild as a baby, which is how a lot of parrots are brought into the pet trade. Um, so she thinks she was taken out of the wild as a baby. She at one point uh, plucked all of her chest feathers out, and she flew away from two of her previous owners. Um, because she flew away from two of her previous owners, Michelle taught Mia her phone number. Which, honestly, I was like, I, I think it's something that we can handle, but if she, <laughs> if she tries to dox Michelle on stream, I'm just gonna scream, okay? I don't know what else to do, unless I'm close enough to the mute where I can mute, or if I can somehow interrupt the behavior. <laughs> but, but she does, like, she'll, just say her phone number. She used to know how to count. Mia used to know how to count. And then Michelle taught her her phone number and now she just says her phone number. And it's not like with birds that speak, it's not necessarily something that you like ask for. It's it's almost like a tick. It's just like, they're just like, you know, and so she'll just say it out of nowhere. Um, so hopefully, I mean, a phone number is pretty long. I'm assuming that it won't be a problem and I can get to the bird before she finishes and doxes Michelle, right? So that's the only problem. That's the only problem with Mia. Um, but they say all the like, you know, hello, I love you, things like that too. But I'm very excited about these two, okay? Very cool. So that's our update for parrots. We got a no from Sydney, but we got a yes for those. <laughs> Look at how cute she is. Ooh, siren. Wow. Noida, thank you for the two months. Note all the animals that I'm talking about, right, talking about right now, I'm doing a road trip to California with Ella um, at the beginning of April, and we'll come back with all of them. Um, Michelle has also offered me a donation to take these birds. She's offered uh, flight enclosures that she has that are just like extra. She has um, uh, aviary doors. She's offered me food to bring back. She was like, yeah, you know what? I have a ton of stuff. I sent a 23 footer to Utah not too long ago with stuff in it. We could do the same thing. So she's being super generous and, and super helpful, which is amazing. Um, so that's for those two parrots. So right now in terms of confirmed, oh, also this was Max's ears were frozen the other day. Max is not confirmed, but the lady who owns the, uh, Mac, he's not really an ambassador, so it doesn't count, but um, the lady who owns the equine rescue, she knows that I'm very interested in him, um, and so I plan on bringing him to the facility as soon as I get a Sarah over there, um, so they can be, they can be companions. Um, no, I don't think it's painful, Tavian. Maybe, like, annoying. We had to cut tails off of some of, not all, not the whole tail, but, like, this much tail off of some of the horses at the ranch the other day where Sarah lives because they got a bunch of mud um clumped on their tail and then the mud froze so it had like you know this much ice around the mud clumps and it was hitting their ankles so we just had to cut tails which was kind of sad because horse tail growth takes forever so that sucked um i blanketed <laughs> you guys have seen these horses so we're gonna do a fundraising stream for them because the lady who owns this facility this equine rescue is also my attorney <laughs> um and 
the way that we're setting up is she's doing all of my legal paperwork and in return I'm teaching her about Twitch, about social media, and I'm going to do a fundraising stream for her, her organization with these horses and donkeys. Um, so you guys will see all of them in person. You'll see Max in person on this stream. I'm just not sure when I'm doing it yet, but it's a pretty cool setup. Um, the other day when I was at her facility, I blanketed, me and Ella blanketed four of her horses. I think some of them I had blankets on before, but it was a mess. It is not easy to put a blanket on a horse that doesn't know what a blanket is. Um, yeah, but they're blanketed. Acero got blanketed for the first time. I showed you the picture of him. He had never had a blanket on before, and he gave me no trouble. I was so proud. He was like, I've done tarp work with him before, which is where you like flap a tarp and throw it over their back, just like to desensitize them to things, you know? Um, and that was really handy, um, for getting the blanket on. It was, it went so well. I was so proud. Anyway, beside the point. So Max is there. We got the blue fronted Amazon. We have the African gray parrot, the donkey. Um, here's a couple, no, let's go through like the confirmed. Okay. This is really exciting. And I didn't want to this is all, it's always the same thing. I don't know if I should talk to you guys about things because I'm like, damn, I don't want to disappoint them, but that's part of it. And every time I just have to remind myself that I'm including you guys on the whole process. So, um, this is very exciting. And the only reason that I wouldn't tell you about it just yet is because um, they just hatched yesterday. So I was worried that there's a chance that they won't make it, but I'm going to show you anyway. Um, Sammy has been incubating emu eggs. And this was, she FaceTimed me last night, um, and they hatched last night. So the plan is to pick up a baby emu as well at the beginning of March. This is a hatching. She wasn't even sure if they were fertile, and they hatched early. Wow. Hi, Maya McKay 1L. Hi, thank you. Wow, look at him. Yay. Very cool. Um, so, assuming that they make it, I'll be getting one baby emu in California as well. Um, originally I had taken emus off of my list, uh, of ambassadors because they're not at risk in the wild right now. Um, doesn't he need to suckle? No, it's a bird, so they don't drink milk, but also they're precocial, so they, they pretty much eat on their own right away. Um... So, 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 yeah, I took emus off my list initially as ambassadors, but then I um, realized that they could actually be a really cool ambassador for the exotic meat trade, um, because there are, there are farms that farm emu for meat, when that isn't really an issue for emus as a species, but it is an issue for lots of species in the wild. So they're going to be, that emu is going to be our exotic meat ambassador. And ideally, it'll be able to live with Acero and Max in the front pasture. So it'll have a ton of space to run around there. Um, wow. Same thing with, yo, thank you. So, and then we have our chinchilla ambassador that I have talked to you guys about before, whose name is Moomin. It belongs to um, Ella right now. Um, and again, chinchillas are like a pretty common pet, so wow. it's not an ambassador that I would like necessarily look for if I was picking ambassadors for this program, but they're a really fantastic ambassador for the fur trade. So we have with the chinchilla, a fur trade ambassador, with the emu, an exotic meat trade ambassador, and with the two parrots, um, exotic pet trade ambassadors, which is super wonderful. Um, and I'm really, really pleased with that. Then we're also gonna take back a snake. And I'm not sure right now, I haven't gotten confirmation if it's gonna be a ball python, um, which you guys already know, I'm sure you've seen a ball python. Uh, I didn't see it, but okay. Um, this is a ball python. They're, I mean, they're they're super docile, pretty basic. Uh, just snakes, I think, are important for these kind of programs. Um, the other one that I've been offered that it's looking more like is a uh, carpet python. Um, these ones get a little bit bigger. They're a little bit less common in the pet trade, 
Um, to be completely honest, this one that I worked with at the zoo uh, was more on the aggressive side, but I don't think that it's because it's, it's an innately aggressive snake. I think it's because um, they got fed at their enclosure. So when you walked up to their enclosure or you went to open it, they thought that they were going to get food. So, so she would like strike Reptiles, at the glass sometimes Maya, thinking that you were going to feed her. Um, so I'm hoping that that's an issue that can be mitigated by taking the snake out and feeding them in a separate location, which is ideal practice anyway. Um, so reptile, <laughs> what up? Thank you. Um, so one snake as well. So just to recap then, we have a chinchilla, an African gray, a blue fronted Amazon, and a snake. What's the purring sound? Uh, I do have my heater on, but you're probably talking about the, the mic whatever so that's a that's a really good list to start with um oh and the emu shit i didn't i didn't edit this list yet because that just happened last night and emu 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 cool okay um or he's doing pretty good i think uh cool okay and then meaning of pro thank you for the five damn that's a lot of subs. Okay, uh, so then for our arthropod, arachnid, reptile room, because I want to start here before I start with like the larger animals. I knew parrots wouldn't be that much of an issue because they're pretty flexible oh, wow. in terms of like you can bring them home, right? I didn't want to get a gator. I was offered a gator. I, I was okay. So other things that I was offered is a gator, a hedgehog, and um, a ferret. I said no to the hedgehog and ferret, and I said no to the gator for a couple reasons. They're a fantastic conservation ambassador. And here's why I said no to the gator, and here's why I'll probably say no to the gator in the future as well, is one, cleaning ponds is a bitch. Dealing with pumps and shit, if you don't know how to deal with pumps, I, I dealt with pumps for three years and I still have to troubleshoot every time I clean a pond, right? I hate cleaning ponds. Two, um, gators grow. <laughs> three um it's not something that's easily transportable um and they're not very flexible in terms of like you can't just bring a gator to your house for a night if it gets really cold or if something bad happens like in this freeze right the crows are in my rehab room right now they're free lofted in that room right now um, because they can't be outside um and so i'm just trying to start small and trying not to overwhelm myself with species that i'm gonna be fucked with if like something you know just because it's beginning so that's the third reason. And the fourth reason is that while I've worked with gators in the past, I've worked with a six footer, I've worked with two, two footers, and then I've worked with a couple like babies, right? Like little gators, like one footers. Um, while I've worked with gators in the past, I am no gator trainer, <laughs> right? I have never put effort into like learning about gator psychology, into training gators. I've never trained a gator from the ground up and I don't trust myself to mitigate a behavioral issue that arises within an within an American alligator. Um, and if we develop a behavioral issue when a gator starts biting or a gator starts, you know, launching at people or jumping at people or whatever, I don't know how to mitigate that. And I don't think it's responsible for me to get a species um, that I'm not capable of, you know, of, of training, um, especially because I'm going to have staff on that property because I'm gonna have streamers come to the property, the liability, I don't want Ella to get hurt, I don't wanna get hurt, and I don't wanna run into a problem. A lot of zoos have this problem where you have an animal, they develop a behavioral issue um, that you don't know how to mitigate or you don't know how to change and they end up just sitting in that enclosure because they're not workable, right? It gets to the point where you're just like, fuck, I can't go in there, I can't clean, I can't like work with them regularly, I can't feed them without, without uh, just throwing it through the bars and they end up just in that enclosure um, forever and I don't want to have an animal on my facility that that gets in that position. So that's why I said no to the gator um, I lost my train of thought from what I was saying before What was I talking about before this? Arachnids, thank you. So that's why I'm starting small Egg, thank you. Um, and Zen Eric, thank you for the three dollars. Oof. Really? They just found a missing guy's remains inside a crocodile in Australia. That's like super uncommon. Wow. Uh, thank you for the sub. 
So that's why I'm starting small. So the parrots, wow. something that you could bring home if you need to. The emu, um, you know, you can kind of bring an emu home, but also you don't need permits. Um, you don't need special permits for emus, so that makes it a little bit easier on me. Um, the chinchilla, very easy uh, to transport or take home or rebuild an enclosure for or trans move or whatever. Um, snake, same thing. And then insects, arachnids, um, arthropods, also very wow. easy because you just have to move terrariums. So I have talked to our arachnid and arthropod advisor, who is unknown gamer. Think of the five. Um, who is Dr. Sebastian Ekaveri, Spider-Man guy? Remember, he studies um, the color spectra that that uh, jumping spiders see. You guys love him. He was on the podcast. He was great. So he's he's our insect or he's our arthrop uh, arthropod arachnid advisor, and I've talked to him. And he's recommended several species to me that I'm gonna look into. Um, the first one being, you guys I'm sure have seen these, rosehair tarantula. So rosehair tarantulas are super easy. They're pretty much, I would consider them the most docile of, of tarantulas that people, that keep people captive breed as pets. Um, they don't have a very clear conservation story but they're really, really great in uh, for handling and, and getting people to kind of change their minds about spiders, right? So they're a really cool spider that you can handle that people can see that I think will be really, really great for the program. And they're fuzzy. Cute. Okay, so there's this one. The second tarantula um, is this. And they have a really cool conservation story, but they're not necessarily uh, very handleable. So beautiful spider right um they almost went completely extinct in the wild because they were taken out of the wild so often it's like super common for people to take spiders out of the wild for the pet trade um and that's really bad for wild populations obviously so they were almost completely extinct in the wild and then they started breeding them in mexico and selling them back to the pet trade and releasing babies to the wild um and so their populations have come back that way which is a really really cool conservation story that is the reason that I'm going to get one of these as an ambassador for the program. But um, it's not going to be a handleable ambassador. I may be able to handle it. Ella may be able to handle it. Um, but they shoot ultracating hairs, um, which is just like really uh, when they get stressed or agitated, they'll, they'll shoot uh, hairs off of their abdomen um, and they kind of just like get under your skin and they're really uh, irritating. Um, I don't think they don't really hurt. I've only had it happen to me once, and it was just like, it was kind of like, like fiberglassy. I don't know how to describe it, but we'll make a really cool display enclosure, um, so it can be put on a table, and they can go in the, it can go in the display enclosure, enclosure on the table, and we can talk about it that way. But they'll be able to handle they being streamers and guests that come to the facility. They can handle the the rose hair and not this spider. Make sense. What I told Sebastian is I would love a handleable, I would love handleable ambassadors, but if they're not, if they're hands off and they have an important story, I'll like, that's fine with me. So those are the two tarantulas that we're looking at. The next one, you guys have probably seen these because they're super common in the pet trade. These are endangered in the wild and a lot of people don't know that. Um, and a lot of it is because of the pet trade, but also just a really docile scorpion um, and uh, handleable. So, an emperor scorpion is is another ambassador that that we're looking at. Um, they're really cool. I'm I'm excited about this one as well. And then the other one that I've looked at is I am talking to Doc, I'm talking to Derek Hennen, uh, who is our millipede guy, about potentially getting a giant millipede um, because they're not venomous. They're really docile, really easy to handle, um, and I think this will be really cool for programs as well. Flicking hairs. Yeah, do you see them? So those are just like really irritating to get in your skin, that's all. You see that? Anyway, it's a very interesting defense mechanism, yeah. Hmm. 
What happens if it gets in your eyes? I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, you're not going to go blind, but you definitely wouldn't want to get it in your eye. Anyway, um, so I think that's it for arthropods arachnids. Um, I have also spoken to Jonathan Colby, who is our frog guy from the podcast, about what species of frog that he think would be good for this program. I told him the same thing. I was like, handleability is is wonderful, but if it has an important enough conservation story, I'll consider a hands-off ambassador that will just make a really cool display enclosure for um, while we do programs. So I'm waiting on an answer for him. He's thinking about that. Frogs have a really important conservation story with the whole chytrid fungus um, that we talked about during the podcast. If you weren't there, you'll learn a lot more about it when we have this frog as an ambassador. But um, yeah, so we're like stocking up. Um, so we'll have, uh, I'm putting a lot of effort into building out this reptile arachnid arthropod room um, so that for a while we, we may just have really solid programs for that. Um, and then we have the two parrots, the chinchilla, the emu, and, and then that snake, which will be in the room as well. So that is the start. Um, yes, I'm still thinking about a zebra. It's really hard to get a zebra. Let me tell you why. It's really sad. I, I've recently learned this and it's really sad is I was looking at auction horse rescue because I've gotten, um, oh, I saw incoming call and I was like, what? And then I looked at my phone. What's up? Maya, dude, watermelon sugar is from TikTok and it's from Harry Styles. I know. Watermelon sugar. Hi. Watermelon sugar. Hi. Okay. Um, so, uh, what kind of snake? It's either going to be a ball python or a carpet python. Um, not because I'm choosing those species specifically for my program, but because those are the ones that I've been offered um, from, uh, from the zoo that I used to work at. So the only other species that I'm talking about, and this is potential, I haven't gotten in contact with her yet, um, is there is this lady, she actually does, she does insanely well on TikTok, and she does really well on Instagram as well. Um, it's called Texas Bee Works, Erica Thompson is her name. Um, she's a beekeeper in Austin, and, and she does, oh, I'll talk about the zebra right after, sorry. Um, she does bee removals, um, without killing bees so she's like very careful about the way she removes bees it's really interesting I've under the floor of this shed but as soon as i started to remove the hive most of the bees moved to the outside wall so i started to scoop the bees into the new hive with my hands as a professional beekeeper i've learned how to read the bees behavior and i could tell that these bees were calm and did not want to sting me they just wanted to get into their new hive so i kept scooping bees off the wall while looking for the queen bee I when showed the bees you are TikToks, gentle, okay. I prefer to wear as little protective gear as possible. The less gear I'm wearing, the more dexterity and agility I have. After scooping most of the bees off the wall, I didn't see any signs of the queen. So I went back in the shed to look for her, and there she was, surrounded by her attendant bees. I put her in a clip to keep her safe, and as soon as I put the queen in the new hive, all of the other bees followed her pheromones and went into the new hive on their own. I waited for all the bees to get into their new home, then I closed up the hive, and it was another great day of saving the bees. So she's awesome. Um, I sent her a DM on Instagram, but I'm sure she gets a ton of DMs about people that are like, there are bees in my house, help, right? So um, I'm going to have to email her, but I would love to do a collaboration with her um, to get bees to Alveus's property, just to have like a hive or two. Um, and uh, I think that'd be really, really cool to do streams like that. Imagine Schlatt like in a bee suit, <laughs> doing an education program with bees, because bees are so important. Holy shit. Gone the fisherman with $100. Thank you so much. Um, I think she just does that, Clark, so that she can keep track of it, and she knows that it's still where she wants it to be. Um, does that make sense? Because it's like, because they all just go to that, so you can like control where they go with like the queen in the clip. Anyway, um, so I'm going to try to talk to her, and then that. That may be another addition to all this. I figure it'd be pretty, I mean, I don't know anything about bees, right? But I figure it could just be like, I don't know what she does with all the bees that she relocates, but I don't imagine it would be that hard to get a hive over. Anyway, um, zebras. So it is exceptionally hard to get a zebra in Texas and here's why. Auction Horse Rescue is an organization that I 
I got a horse off the track from, a filly off the track from when I was in high school. I started, it was great, whatever. I love the organization. They go to the um, live auctions where people surrender horses and donkeys and whatever um, for whatever people buy them for. So a lot of people go there and buy them like in bulk, for lack of better phrasing, and buy them for really cheap um, and then use them for, you know, dog food or, or whatever, whatever they want to use them for. Zebras. I thought I could get one through Auction Horse Rescue because they're notorious for being assholes, right? So people think that they're really cute and then they get them and they're like, damn, this is not a horse. I don't want it anymore. And so they throw it in the auction. So I was like, okay, easy. I'll just get one from Auction Horse Rescue. But there is a guy who lives in North Texas who has a game ranch, which is where you like have exotic animals on a big property and people can come and camp there and shoot everything that's on your property, basically. So there's a guy in North Texas who pays top dollar for zebras adult zebras because people want to shoot adult zebras um so everybody knows him so when the horses get into auction horse rescue he's contacted first because he'll pay the most um so even if i offered to pay a higher dollar than this guy people don't know who i am yet you know so it's it would be thank you for the 69 dollars <laughs> this is not for Maybe leaves first. but i appreciate it um so no one reports this guy no because it's not illegal um game ranches are really fucked up and really sad but it's a business um and in texas there are a lot of them so nobody knows who i am so he's just gonna get to all the zebras first here so my only idea that i have now and i'm not thinking about it right now because i'm i'm stacked up on things that that we have to plan for and get right now um is can you just ask him for one you know I could. I, I have not reached out to him, but I have a feeling that he doesn't care all that much about the conservation of zebras. That's just, I mean, maybe he could. I could be wrong. But I don't think he'd make a donation. People Josh, about. thank you for the nine months. Um, I don't know. And it's kind of like, if I were to go and offer him ten for a zebra, it's kind of counterintuitive i mean it's not counterintuitive for that for that individual but it's kind of like if i wanted a snake and i went to petco to buy it you know what i mean like it's better off with me than it is petco but not the best way to get an ambassador so a hard decision but that's that's what that's what makes sense in my head um oh here we go I'm not vegan or vegetarian. Where are you on your vegan journey? I'm gonna have to make a command for that or something. I know that I have to make a video for both that and for um, how to how to get into being an animal professional or like a, a professional in wildlife or zoos or whatever. I just really don't want to. <laughs> um, is Maya vegan? No, I'm not vegan. Same shit, different day. Um, I buy my meat wholesale uh, from a butcher, which means that I know where the animal itself comes from and their, and their you know, smaller facilities. Um, but if you want to reduce your enviro environmental footprint as much as you can, eating less meat is, is a really good thing to do. So, zebras. Okay, the only other idea that I had for zebras is I have found a zebra breeder um, who seems like a really wonderful lady and she really really loves her zebra she also is a natural horseman which i am as well natural horsemanship is just another um, method of of horse training it's like your your hippie wave of of horse trainers it's like uh it's like the people that feed their dog raw food diets but not stupid um Anyway, so she does that, I do that, so um, I can relate to her a little bit there, and I think she is way more likely to consider making a donation for this kind of thing, because um, she breeds and sells zebras uh, than the other guy is, but that's not something that I'm going to look into right now. I think that's... Oh, I also have to talk to you guys about the crows. So... I initially was going to do both of the crows at, <laughs> that's a fun, is that a bell? Dink donk. <laughs> um, 
Can zebras be dangerous? Yeah, I've, I've heard that zebras, like, bite and kick and are just, like, really challenging as an equine to train. Um, the crows. Hey, wow. Thank you for the two months. I initially was going to have both the crows at Alveus. Um, I had a conversation with the founder of the rehab center. Sir? I had a conversation with the founder of the rehab center um, about potentially transferring the crows to uh, Alveus for them to be ambassadors at Alveus. So I thought that each animal has its own requirements and needs its own expertise. If you are planning to have so many animals, whom are you getting as an expert to take care of so many species? It was never the plan to have a specific staff member for each species at the center. Uh, that's not sustainable and that's not how any zoos do it. Um, there, <laughs> within the month of March, we are creating, um, I'll tell you about the, about the documents we're creating in March. So before we get these animals, we're creating super, super detailed care sheets um, for, for each of the species that we're getting. Uh, we're creating a collection policy. Oh, wow. Thank you. Um, we're creating a collection policy uh, for the animals that we get that, that specifies, you know, the fact that the, the mission for Alveus is conservation education first, animal sanctuary second. So while there may be animals that come to us, that's like a, you know, if we get offered six red tails that are injured, that are non-releasable, we can't take all six because our mission is conservation education. And we're gonna have that laid out um, so that we can send it to people because we're, inevitably gonna get offered a lot of animals, right? They're gonna be people that contact me saying like, my pet ferret has a broken leg and can't really walk. Will you take him? We're gonna have a document that we can send out to people that say, this is why we can't take this. This is why we can't take this animal or this is why we don't wanna take this animal, blah, blah, blah. So collection policy, uh, fact sheets, care sheets for each species. People Thank wow. you. And then a quality of life policy. Um, so similar in that, well, that's probably self-explanatory. But if somebody offers us a thing that's on its last leg that is not happy living, um, it'll be laid out in, in a policy that uh, that exists so we can send it to people. Tree, thank you for the tier one. Um, why are you even let this bird captive? Is this what animal rights is all about? Free it please at Maya. So Orion is a peregrine prairie falcon hybrid, um, which means he was born in captivity. I didn't buy him. Um, he was bred for falconry. Um, people use these birds for hunting, for abatement. Um, and so he was captive bred. He has a leg brand. He's not a releasable bird because he's a hybrid of, of two of two birds. Um, so releasing him could be detrimental both to him and to the environment. Um, so yeah, he's, he's not a releasable bird, but he does free fly. Um, so he gets to fly and he gets to hunt. Uh, is, hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> to you um he's inside right now i have the i have his enclosure panels it's 10 by 10 um in the back of my truck and it's going to be built out but they haven't been able to build it yet because it's snowing and if orion was outside right now he would be dead so fuck me though um <laughs> the crows the conversation with the founder didn't really go very well um, about having them transferred to my facility. Uh, the way that I approached it was like, I know that I'll have the most, me and Ella are the primary trainers for the crows, right? So I was like, I know that I'll have the most time for them if they're at my facility. I can offer them like a way more structured, way more regular training program uh, if they're at my facility. And the conversation just didn't go that great, um, which is okay because I kind of realized that if I'm sticking to the mission of Alveus, again, the the primary mission of Alveus is conservation education. The secondary mission mission is um is animal sanctuary and crows are doing more than fine <laughs> um in the wild their wild counterparts are doing more than fine and they're not exploited by the pet trade the only angle that i have uh, for conservation education for crows is that some people think of them as pests or as a nuisance um, but i don't think it's a strong enough angle to dedicate that many resources of person Keep it up, Maya. Thank you. To American crows as a species. Does that make sense? Zudi, wow. thank you for the sub. 
So the only reason that I would consider these crows being at my facility, I point here because they're in the rehab room. The only reason I would consider having these crows at Alveus is because I've already been working with them, I already know them, and I'm, I already have them on a training program. But I wouldn't look for a crow for an ambassador, so that's why I think I'm not- Oh, you got stuck. Is that it? Um, so that's why I think I'm not going to have the crows at the facility. Um, I was offered another crow who broke both of his femurs falling out of the nest when he was little. Um, and one of his feet has healed backwards. And so initially I was like, we can try to do a trial introduction with mine, see if they can all live together. Otherwise, they'll come back. And then the Alveus thing got kind of shut down. So I was like, okay, um, I'm going to try to bring that crow back as well and see if they get along with my crows at the rehab center and see if he can be an additional ambassador at the rehab center so that there will be three of them. And if it doesn't work, then that crow, his name is Bling, then Bling will have to go back to California. Um, but weird, he's never flown before, which is really strange because I asked if it was neurological and they don't think that it is. Um, he said it may be because of feather damage, but he's just never flown. Like he just lets him out in his backyard with his dogs and he runs around and then comes back inside. And he'll like hop up the stairs, but he has never flown, which is really bizarre. Um, but it, sad as that is, it does make him a far more workable ambassador for the rehab center. Um, wow. So maybe yeah. that'll work out really well. Um, and because mine are really hard and I won't be there as often to train them, um, even if they aren't able to bring these out to programs because they are fully flighted and, you know, maybe they can bring bling out. And so that way they'll have a crow that's um, more usable. These gray names. Wow. Yo. I donated $100 oh. to her last stream for a leave. Thank you. BTW, her hair looks good. Thank you. All right. Um, People so... Wow. Are you thinking of adding endangered fish species? I have not thought about that yet. That could be kind of interesting, though. Um, I'll talk about this one more time for today. Uh, because I'm sure there are people that are here thinking about obvious, whatever. And I know there are people that are really, really passionate about a plant-based diet. Um, I have never been on a plant-based diet. Um, I grew up eating meat. And the meat that I grew up eating was uh, from 4-H'ers or from FFA. So how are you defining conservation? The education part will be probably teaching us about them. People talk about I'm sorry, I'm really confused by your question. Okay, so the meat that I grew up uh, eating when I was a kid was from the county fair, right? So I either knew the animal personally um, or I knew the kid that was raising it. Um, so we would buy half a hog, quarter of a steer every year at the fair and that's the meat that we would eat all year. So it all came from one animal. Um, I knew where it came from. That is my favorite way to consume meat. Um, I feel the best about that. It's really hard to do that in Texas because I don't have contacts with 4-H'ers and I don't, I don't even know where county fairs are in Texas. I haven't been to any, also COVID. Um, so what I do now is I go to a butcher who buys meat wholesale from small farms. Um, and so that way the meat that I buy is all from one animal. So it's far more traceable than going to the supermarket and purchasing ground beef and purchasing chicken. Um, so that's how I that's how I consume meat and that's how I feel okay with consuming meat. I hope that that clears it up a little bit or it makes a little bit more sense to you. Um, yeah, I'm a simp for money. Yo, what can I say? Thank you. Yo, almost a month. Peepo pock. I have no issue with with a plant based diet. I think veganism is fantastic for the environment. Um, if you want to commit that much of your life to your diet, that's awesome. Like if you're into it, that's great. Um, it's, it's a great way to reduce your footprint. Uh, totally makes sense. I do not have a problem with that. So. Cool. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. If you're think if you don't want to become a vegan or a vegetarian, but you still want to consume meat, like you're not ready to let go of eating meat. Um, I just applied for a position cool. at my local zoo as a general animal care person. Wish me luck and do you have any tips if I get the job? Um, just take initiative like any other job. Work hard. Um, don't be too disappointed when you're not touching animals for a very long time. It takes a while to build up. Crimson, thank you for the four months. Thanks, Maya. We appreciate everything you do. <laughs> Crimson D. did graphics for me before I met Matt, I think. 
<laughs> Yo. <laughs> um, okay, like my panels and shit. So if you if you want to be if you don't want to be vegetarian or a vegan, um, and you're not ready to let go of meat, but you want to do it more ethically, I do recommend going to a butcher and trying to buy from somebody that buys wholesale. Um, you can do research to find to find meat that way. And if that's too hard for you, if you don't want to do that much resource or research, the other thing you can do is is purchase from Imperfect Foods. That's like my second best option if I can't get to the butcher. Is Imperfect Foods. Um, takes overstock items from grocery stores and like imperfect items so like produce that's that's misshapen or nuts that are misshapen or or ends like they sell bacon ends and things like that right so you can buy like chopped up bacon that's the ends of what they cut off to to shape meat the right way that kind of thing um you can buy from imperfect foods and that's another ethical way to to consume or a more ethical way to consume meat um but they don't they don't ship everywhere so you just have to put your zip code into their website but I, I've been using Imperfect Foods for a really long time. Bacon ends? Wow. Yeah. I love getting bacon ends from Imperfect. Because um, you know they'd be thrown away otherwise. And you get them and it's literally just chopped up bits of bacon. <laughs> Which is like, I would already do that anyway. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, and then they'll take like, they'll take almonds that got broken in processing. Because they won't sell broken almonds. Which is so stupid. Um, but... They won't sell broken almonds in grocery stores. They discard them as, like, scraps. So Imperfect takes, like, the the crushed up almonds or the broken ones from production, and then they cover them in chocolate, and then they sell you, like, you know, little almond bits that are covered in chocolate, which is sick, too. And it's way cheaper than buying groceries. Um, so, yeah. Can you do some something about betta fish? They're not the... They're the most common pet fish, but most of them do not have adequate aquariums. Um... I have not thought about fish yet, but I will think about it down the road. You're right about that. Uh, a lot of people have betas and it's really sad the way that they're kept. What did your metal guy say about the amount of leaves? My metal guy has not gotten back to me and I don't think it's because he saw the stream. Support your local ranchers. Grass fed sent straight to the butcher and we actually love and care for our animals. Nice. Um, so... He peaced out. I don't think... No, so I didn't tell him the number of leaves. I think it's because I wasn't rude to him, but I gave him two weeks to give me an estimate on a, on a donor tree that was going to be two or 300 leaves. I gave him two weeks to give me an estimate. The day before the fundraiser, I, I had talked to him during the day and I was like, I need it by tonight because I'm going to put up this price for leaves tomorrow on, on my during my fundraiser. So I need an estimate by tonight. And he said, absolutely no problem. Like I'll send you an estimate by tonight. He didn't. So then the morning before the fundraiser, I left him a message and I was like, this is the price that I'm putting up for the leaves. I really hope that I'm not gonna lose money on this. Like I've been waiting on an estimate for two weeks and you haven't gotten back to me. So please give me a call back as soon as you can and give me a ballpark. I just need a ballpark. And he never called me back. So this guy is fucked because he just lost a lot of money. <laughs> a lot of money um because he's a pussy so we're gonna talk to somebody else anyway um i have to pee damn cna Let's try, we'll do, hmm. whatever. Hold on, I'm gonna pee.
it up. Uh, doing amphibian wow. enclosures. What's up, Surfer Squad? In this video, I thought that was my sub sound. I was like, what the fuck Sneak was that? Out. Oh my god. Victor, thank you. Um, this guy does enclosures. This is cool. Ooh. To go over. Super good. Yeah, I could talk to this guy. This could be a cool From there, collab. The rest of and add some nice pops of green. Cute. I bet he could do something really cool for the frog. That's exactly how I wanted it to look. Simple and elegant. To the open water. See you on the next one, Serpa Squad. Take care hmm. and peace. He has frogs? Nice. Okay, I'll, uh... I'll put him on my list. What's up, Surfer Squad? What's up? Okay. The list. Yeah, we have to develop a list right now for the amount of people that have reached out offering to help, but we don't necessarily need their help right now, but we could use their help later. Like a whole list of like web developers and artists and graphic designers and people, pog, wow. people that have just like that want to help already. And I'm just like, I just don't need everybody's help right now. Eventually, I I will probably may I might not even need to ask people, at this pog, point. Wow. I don't know. Yeah, Tofa from the stream. Um, I went through the email yesterday and sorted through all the PayPal emails and found a bunch of people that that were wanting to do things will you add woolly mammoths unfortunately no how would one go about fund rate funding an enclosure alveus and could we fund a specific one absolutely you can email me at maya at alveussanctuary.org um even if your budget is not that large we can probably figure something out for you um like i said there are small streamers that have that have uh, emailed me um, who who want to do something and um, their budget's not crazy but even if you wanted to like sponsor a bench or something at the facility we could put your name on it um, right I'm I'm open to anything talking to lots of people about that so Quentin I don't know what you're talking about I, I don't know what questions you're talking about I I only saw the one question and it was what is the education part will be probably teaching us about them and the answer to that is yes i think wow. i don't know <laughs> nice um oh, wow wow There are lots of people, I don't know if these are new people, but there are lots of people that are concerned with ethics right now. I'm happy to talk about ethics. Um, I really am doing my best here. This person said, how do you keep engaged with Orion? He, she seems lonely over there in the perch without any interaction. Are you talking in the same, is you talking in the same room enough engagement for him or her? So yeah, Orion's a, Orion's a male. Um, he has no interest in engagement unless it's me feeding or flying him. Um, they're not like dogs. They're not like cats. They're not affectionate whatsoever. He does not want to be like sitting with me on my glove. Um, there is, he's chilling. Yeah, he's happiest left alone. Um, so, so you don't need to worry about that. It's not like I need to give him attention. He doesn't want attention. Any like talking that I do to Orion, like if I'm like, hey, like, how are you? That kind of thing does nothing for him. It only does something for me. Um, if anything, it just kind of irritates him, or not irritates, it agitates him a little bit that I'm like pointing my, my energy in his direction that way, you know? If you ever hear me talking to him or if I say good boy or anything like that, it's not like a dog that, that benefits from that interaction. Very different. Uh, all he wants to do is fly and kill things, which he gets the opportunity to do, I guarantee you. Right now he's inside, he has an outdoor enclosure that's being built, um, but he's inside because it's freezing. It's like 12 degrees, so he can't be outside right now. Um, and 
it's it's just safest for him to be in here uh, so that's why he's here but Cool. People pog. Wow. When is the Alveus merch coming? Thank you. That's so many things to talk about. Um, do you have an official position for Alveus in regards to sponsors from big companies, like ones that are sem that sell harmful products, etc.? That's a very broad question. I do not have any positions that are documented or written out. No. Um, but I've also never been offered a big sponsor. I assume I will take it on a case by case basis. Merch. So, I am doing my own line of merch before I do, before I launch the Alveus merch. I think I'm going to launch the Alveus merch once you guys start seeing the facility. So, I've been thinking about what kind of merch to do because I haven't done merch since, um, the charity line in California. <laughs> like a year? Um, I haven't, I haven't done merch since I fundraised wow. for the Australia wildfires. Yeah. Fifth guy, thank you for the eight months. And I made no money on that merch, or practically no money, because it was a charity line. So, I'm doing my own line of merch now, um, and I'll just show you. He's not going to like that I'm going to show you, but I'm going to do it anyway. Don, I don't know if you're awake, but I don't care. 